Howdy y'all and welcome to episode 35 of my Let's Play series. I'm Regaris and uh, we are playing now the ultimate pack of Feed the Beast. Uh, I've done a few changes since the last episode. Uh, we added the melon farm over here so we can start uh, getting our seed oil so we can start doing bees. Um, I made it so um, all my seeds, you know, I had a lot of seeds in there. I've drained all those out making seed oil. And then, of course, I take all the, uh, the melons from here, and uh, they're all put down into our processing area here. All the seeds, uh, or melons come here. Um, the seeds go there. I've got them turned off right now because I had to empty that chest. So I was going to let it build up a little bit. I'm getting a lot of melons, so it, it wasn't a big deal. So we've got quite a bit of seed oil going. Um, starting to do bees, process a little bit of honey. Going to need a lot more, of course, for that. And we can run over and take a look at where we're doing bees. I decided to do the bees over here because it's an ocean biome. And uh, from what I'm seeing, ocean biomes have a uh, better compatibility with uh, more bees than, say, like a meadows or plains biome. Um, right now I have common going. Uh, these are just breeding up so I can start, uh, when I make the genetic machines, I can start uh, getting their DNA. Uh, that I will be doing uh, maybe this episode, I don't know. And then I've got my cultivated. Uh, of course, you need your cultivated and your common so you can start making the other ones. And I have made the Imperial Bee already. And right now, as you can see over here, I'm getting some diligence going so I can start getting to the industrious. Um, it took me a while to get the... I, I kept somehow skipping over to the Unweary, which is the next level. But to get industrious, you need a, a purebred diligent and a purebred unweary. And I just wasn't getting a purebred diligent. So that's what I'm doing right now. And I'm building myself up a nice stock just in case, uh, you know, I have to do that again. That's what these uh, chocolate frames do. Is They don't really produce anything, but it just it makes them reproduce really, really quickly. So... Uh, hopefully soon I'll have the uh, industrious going, and then once I have those, uh, we'll start mass or not mass producing, but um, hopefully genetically alter them. That's when I'll so I can get them all fast production, longer lives and whatnot, and then we can really start producing the uh, materials we need for the alvearies. So that's pretty cool. Now another thing I did. Um, you know, normally when I want mobs, what I'll do is uh, if I if I don't have a mob spawner, uh, you know, with the old miscraft, I would just get a void age and uh, you know go into a void age and make myself a uh, just a a mob spawner where I could get everything. But with this pack, you have um, Mine Factory Reloaded, and it comes with uh, Monster Essence and Safari Nets, uh, which I probably will not get to in this episode. Because I'm still just building up the uh, monster essence, you can see it's it's going up pretty quick. Um, what I did was I took a tier five uh, skeleton spawner and I placed it in there. I didn't use any of the conveyor belts or anything. Uh, you know, water works just as well uh, for this. And uh, along that wall there, you'll see there are nine mob grinders. Um, on the underside is a liquid duct draining all the mob essence out and on the back side is a golden pipe that just goes to a void pipe because I don't need all the uh, the arrows and bones and crap I've, I've got so many of those already that I don't need anymore so this just steadily kills them and then collects that mob essence so my plans for the uh, mob essence uh, there's all kinds of things you can do with it enchanting and and uh, spawning other mobs so uh, you know, I'm going to try to actually stay away from Miscraft in this uh, in this world if I can. Um, just because I, I seem to always have problems with Miscraft. And if, uh, like, if my power goes out, see, I live in a pretty heavily wooded area. And uh, if the wind blows, I swear it knocks a transformer out or something. And uh, so as soon as we get a heavy wind or a rainstorm here, I know I'm going to lose power you know, at least momentarily. 
uh, a couple of times during a storm. And uh, it's like every time that happens, uh, if I'm in a miscraft age, uh, my world gets corrupted. So, and then I have to go and spend, you know, time trying to fix that and, you know, move my, my dat files around. And so I'm, I'm going to try to avoid miscraft if I can. Unless there's just something I really just want to do in there, I'm, I'm just going to stay away from them. I'll probably still collect the, the pages and whatnot, but, you know, I won't be using Miscraft to uh, do some of the things that I normally would, like the uh, mop spawner, for sure. Now, I'm really trying to decide what I want to do as far as the rest of the episode. Um, I'll probably be back when I do. I'm not sure if I want to do... Uh, finish up the breeding the bees and then uh, start building the uh, advanced machines for that and uh, show you guys how to set those up or if I want to do the uh, the mob spawner so I'll definitely take a look at that um, some other things I've done real quick uh, you'll see these right here down in the floor are um, a macerator here and then a furnace here and this one actually has uh, the, the furnace actually has two ME interfaces on it because there's so many recipes that uh, I added a second one back here so that I could start getting everything in. Um, I wish it almost had more spots because uh, I don't know if I could even put it on the top or on the bottom if it would work, but uh, it seems to work on the side and on the top for the uh, the furnace so far. I don't know if it'll work if I put one on the bottom, so hopefully I don't have any more recipes. I still need to put a compressor, uh, maybe a compressor down there, I'm not sure. Um, you know, I left them all here, I added a plate bending machine, uh, these things are annoying, um, this is all Greg Tech crap, um, and the, the thing that annoys me about Greg Tech is every one of these things takes 128 dedicated uh, power, well, except for the centrifuge, but like the blast furnace, if you're not giving it its own MFE, uh, or it's not receiving 128 uh, sustained, it, it won't run. And the same thing with the uh, electrolyzer. Uh, I was making chrome, I think it was chrome, so I can make heating coils for the for the blast furnace. The heating coils allow this to get up higher. Uh, I need to make the next level of heating coils, which I think I can do. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, I, yeah, that's that's the only thing I don't like about uh, the um, the ultimate pack is Greg Tech. I, I just he's got some neat stuff in there, but it just he changes every single recipe darn near to uh, you know pretty much require one of his machines now, and that's just. Uh, yeah, it's annoying. Uh, I'm sure some people love it, some people hate it. I'm sure, but uh, yeah, not not a fan. Um, now I did start using the uh, centrifuge just to start giving myself a little bit more uh, uh, copper and tin, which is like the hardest thing for me to find right now. Uh, you can see I don't have a lot of it, and uh, my power source, of course, is the uh, uh, the bio engines, biogas engines, and um, I did add a a third one. Oof! Those little mob spawners killing me in there. Um, I did add a third one, so each one of these does a hundred uh, MJ, and it doesn't seem to be hurting me. On I have this set up now, so if it's full, it shuts the power off to the uh, harvester down below, so it doesn't overflow. Um, I forgot to do that, and uh, when I went upstairs once, you know, it was like 800 and thought I had plenty of time, and I came back down here, and I had sugar cane all over the place, so um, I went ahead and, and did that, so we have the gate saying if the inventory is full, red pipe, and, and then if you go down below, oh. You go down here, you can see that uh, it, it comes down here, and this one is set to uh, if a uh, if a red pipe signal is active, uh, to give a redstone signal, and uh, this is just right on top of the uh, the power tesseract and and um, 
So once it gets a redstone signal, it shuts off. We're going to just hear an Enderman. That will be the first guy I catch with the Safari Net and uh, and kill will be an Enderman. So I can start getting uh, some sort of Ender Pearl uh, harvest going. Because right now, for Ender Pearls, I'm just using the minium stone and, uh, you know, iron ingots, which is no big deal. I mean, I've got tons of gold from the uh, pigman spawner, um, so it's not like it's it's an issue. The only issue with this, uh, with the ultimate pack, and I think it did, it did the same thing in the dire wolf pack, is sometimes when you uh, try to use a minium stone, I hit that down there. Um, where is it? There we go. Is and of course this time it'll work, but a lot of yeah no see it it doesn't show up, so you'll you'll kind of have to restart and um, you have, you have to completely restart the client. I mean you can't just uh, log out of the world and log back in for it to work. You have to completely restart the client or you don't get it. And it's just the single item um, recipes that seem to do that because if I do it uh, like a four, then it works fine. And, uh, you know, you get diamonds, so. And uh, gold's just not a problem. I mean, I, like I said, I've, I've got a ton of ton of gold. can get as much as I want, so I'm, I don't, it doesn't bother me to uh, use that to uh, make something else I may need. That's not a problem at all. Um, I don't think I really made any other changes. I did have the pigman spawner in the uh, the room down there with the uh, the pellet launcher, but I pulled it out and I put it back over here uh, just to give myself a little extra uh, speed with the uh, book enchanting because um, I'm trying to get a repair for my uh, uh, what you call it? Ooh. You bastard! And die. And can I get you? There, I got you. All right, welcome back. Uh, it's been a little while, and we made some changes. Uh, quite a few, actually. Um, you know, I was saying earlier, I was going to debate what uh, whether I was going to do the uh, something with the monster essence or something with the advanced machines. Come to find out, I <coughs> kind of did both. Um, I needed uh, gas tears for some of those, which I had forgotten about. And uh, didn't have any, um, so I went over to the Twilight Forest and uh, I found one of those uh, wooden tower things where they used to have the little gas in it, but I couldn't find any in there. So what I did is um, I decided to go ahead and use the Monster Essence and the Safari Nets and whatnot. So I went out and uh, put this little room together right here. All this is is a little spawning room. Uh, you know, it's a 9x9x5, nine by nine by um, so it'll pretty much spawn uh, everything. And I went and collected an Enderman. Um, I've got a few villagers in here that I've been playing around with. I got, I got a witch hut from a swamp. Uh, phew, boy, I sat there for like three or four uh, Minecraft days trying to get one to spawn. Um, chicken, of course. I got And I went and got a ghast. And I also got a uh, you know, an angry zombie, which I haven't done anything with yet, but I did get a, a, a gas shard and an enderman shard. Um, I haven't done anything with them yet. Um, I just collected, you know, just getting the shards. I collected a whole bunch of, uh, ender pearls and gas tears. So I'm, I'm pretty good for a while, but that is a, you know, that's a future project is to do something with those shards. So I do have those. And, uh, Got a bunch of emeralds because what I did is I uh, picked a villager that had a trade uh, 15 beef for uh, an em or for an emerald, and since I have a ton of beef, in fact, I can turn this off now. Um, I did a bunch of tra trading uh, with the villagers because the uh, the funny thing with this one is if you look on my mini map up there, like right above us. Uh, almost right above us is the uh, little villager trading area. 
So when the villagers spawn, they all come over here and they just walk around like this, just in this corner right here. So it's really easy for me to just go over there and trade with them. Uh, they don't wander out or anything because I, I guess they're seeing that as a village and they're trying to get inside there. So that's pretty funny. But uh, yeah, I got a few stacks of emeralds uh, from doing that. Still working on the um, on the bees. I managed to get the uh, industrious finally. So you know, once I had the uh, the gasters and everything, I was able to make all the machines. So we have our gene pool that's you know giving us our our liquid DNA, which is right in there. Don't have a lot of that yet. Uh, we're you know pumping out some bees for that. Um, got my isolator, the synthesizer. The purifier and then finally the inoculator and uh, I, I did use the fast productivity serum for the uh, oh no the uh, industrious and the imperial so hopefully they're gonna start pumping out the uh, the royal jelly and the pollen that we'll need to make the alvearies um, you know of course once we get the you know a couple of alvearies going our production will really ramp up because um, we'll set it up with uh, what you call it, the uh, frame housings, so it'll really kick it out, so we'll really get some. Now, um, for those of you who don't know anything about bees, um, this one, of course, grinds down the bees and turns them into liquid DNA. Uh, you need that for the other machines to uh, add the new effects. Um, the isolator, you put a bee in here, and it gives you um, the traits from bees. Uh, whether it be a longer lifespan, fast productivity, uh, nocturnal, uh, things like that, you'll get these uh, these serums, and then you have to uh, once you have the serum, you have to charge it up in a synthesizer. Uh, now, while you're charging up in the synthesizer, you'll notice on this one where it says excellent quality. Uh, as you charge it up, the quality will drop, uh, but you don't want to use it unless it's in excellent quality. So that's why you then put it into a purifier. Now you need the liquid DNA. You'll see the, the tanks right here. You need those for those bees. And uh, that will put it up to an excellent quality. Uh, you drop your bees. You want to change the trade on up here. They'll fall down here. When they're done, you, you'll get them down here. So now we can really start uh, getting our bees. Um, Still trying to get DNA so I can start putting the uh, the rainfall and the nocturnal on these guys. Um, I did get the cultivated, the um, the unweary, the industrious. I need to do an imperial still, but uh, so we have you know our species serums for later. The uh, the next bee that I want to work on is going to be of um, the uh, oh shoot what is it the uh, Oh darn it! I can't remember the name of it. The uh, the one you got to produce in the Nether. Um, I'm sure I'll remember it later. Um, but I want to do that because right now I'm drawing lava. Uh, I don't use a lot of lava. Um, where I do have lava usage, and it's pretty light um, right now. It's of course for making. Um, stone doesn't use very much, and then uh, in our industrial centrifuge for making copper and tin. Uh, the other place that we use it, of course, is down in our power area, um, down here. And it uses it. It doesn't use a lot because it only uses it if I turn it off, and and uh, you know it's running quite a bit right now. Um, because all the uh, monster grinders, all the bee machines. Uh, are running off of these two all pretty much all the uh the machinery over in the main uh housing area there that that all comes from these two uh this one takes care of all the b um, machines all the b machines are on this one because uh it those do take a lot of power so right now they're uh they're all you can see they're all moving uh, typically if you're not pulling enough power out of these things uh they'll they'll ramp down they'll just stop moving and and when you look at it, it it'll say over here um not powered down but it, it, it'll say something along that effect that it's it's powering down um and even with all three of these things running you can see that uh this stays full most of the time uh, 
the red wire engine is on or the red wire signal is on right now telling it uh, or turning off the power to the um, sugarcane harvester down there so this thing just stays as soon as this fills up um, it just picks more from the, the sugarcane field down below and fills that and uh, this one is doing the oak saplings from uh, the uh, tree farm right above us there directly above us actually you can see the mini map the trees are getting cut down so the saplings come from there uh, I have not automated this yet uh, because I can go like two or three days before I have to and that's real life days of when I play before I have to uh, go and put any in but eventually I'll, I'll automate that with a um, like I did in the Dire Wolf 20 world using a um, moistener and uh, wheat and a um, well, we'll do that in another episode. We'll we'll just walk through that entire build. It's not very difficult, and you just get uh, you know easy mulch from it. Cannot believe I don't remember the name of that stupid bee. I'm still sitting here trying to. Begins with a sinister, sinister. There you go. It's a sinister bee. That's what we're we're needing to breed. So that's probably what I'm going to do now. Is I'm going to um, go off for just a few minutes. Uh, well, no. Probably for me it'll be a while, but for you it'll just be a, a split second. And, uh, oops, I still hear that thing running up there. I forgot to turn it off. Let me go over here and turn this off. Got a ton of meat. A ton of meat and hide. I actually stopped saving this because I, I don't think I'll ever use that much leather, but never know. Um, I've got a bunch saved up in the, uh, in our storage system, so we, we have plenty of leather, I think, for a while. The meat is really easy, uh, is a good trade for villagers, since I have so much, it's, you know, only 15, so for, you know, I got four emeralds per stack of that beef, so that's pretty good, I'll take that, that's a good, uh, just making sure we keep all our frames and stuff going here, uh, right now I'm just manually moving them from when they're, uh, at, at a stack of 64 over to the inner chest, and, uh, then over in our tank area over there um, it's being the, those combs were pulled out and then processed into uh, to uh, liquid honey so I'm going to pause real quick and go take a uh, we need a modest and a cultivated which we have um, that's the two bees that uh, we need to make the um, so I've got a modest and go up here and grab a cultivated and we're going to go over, uh, these have to be bred in the, um, what you call it, uh, the, uh, the nether. There you go, the nether. Yeah. So I'm going to go do that, and um, hopefully when we get the uh, Sinister Beast, we'll be back and uh, start thinking about uh, lava production. So see you in just a second. And we are backage. I uh, did finally get the Sinister Bees. It was actually, uh, I got the uh, purebred on the first try. So that was really cool. But of course, uh, if you've ever done bees, you know that, um, you know, the Sinister Bees only work normally in hellish and arid. So I did have to do a, uh, a little, I, I made a acclimatizer. And uh, threw some water in there to get the uh, humidity down or up to, so that should be good enough to uh, work in this environment. And uh, then I threw some ice in there to get them down three. Um, down two just doesn't seem to work. I've always had problems with uh, down two um, to get them to work. I also added the uh, the fast worker on them or fast productivity serum. And uh, right now I am working on the effect cancellation because these things have a, um, uh, I'm not sure if it's a poison or a, uh, what, it, what is it? They, they have an effect that hurts. Um, aggressive, yeah, they just, I guess they sting you. And uh, I don't want to get stung every time I get around them. So we're going to remove that little pesky uh, effect that they've got. And then we'll be able to start uh, breeding them down here. Now we're really not going to do uh, a lot of lava with these things until um, until we get some alvearies going. Um, 
so I'm probably not going to try to automate anything with these guys just yet. Um, I might. I, I mean, I can. I, I finally got the uh, the cave dwelling, so I'm debating whether to just. Uh, I got the cave dwelling. I have the nocturnal and the rainfall now. Uh, I got those from Rocky Bees from my quarry, and um, so I could probably run them down in the uh, the cave area or the uh, underground area or I could just run them up here and then and move all their goodies out with uh, you know with item tesseracts but uh, or inner chest or whatever we want to do uh, I'll figure that out later I guess but we definitely do have our our sinister bees um, eventually um, when I get more of these what I'll do is I'll work them all the way up to um, I think they're called demonic um, is the upper tier one um, they give the uh, combs and glowstone dust not that I really need a lot now that I have that uh, I have added uh, a witch's spawner up here so now I have a zombie pigman a witch and a little bug with the uh, spawners I had a wither skeleton spawner right here and I broke it when I uh, was moving these and uh, it um, what you call it, it uh, changed to a tier 5 skeleton, just a normal skeleton spawner. So uh, what I had to do was take a another soul shard, go kill another wither, and I only needed one, and then you put the uh, the single kill in here with the full one, and it and it changes it back, but that's kind of a bullshit, oh, excuse my French, uh, bu yeah, yeah, no, that was a bullshit bug, so... Um, because I took a lot of time to kill those things. Because uh, even even using the anvil to make a tier five takes a long time. Because uh, you know they don't spawn regularly. I mean it it took me quite a while to get the uh, the wither skeleton uh, tier five, and that was even using the anvil just because of how how rarely they spawn. Uh, luckily, I have like um, two nether fortresses or nether plumber. Two nether fortress, fortresses. Good lord, I can't even say it. With uh, within walking distance of my uh, my my nether portals in the nether, so it wasn't too. You know, I just went and got another. But it was a waste of uh, part of a diamond to go and get something that I already had. Yeah, it's kind of a pain in the butt. I guess now what I could do is just go uh, safari net one. And uh, keep one of those just in case that that happens again. That was a little upsetting, though. I was like, man. So I could just go get another. Just make a safari net. They're pretty cheap. They're just uh, four ender pearls and a uh, gas tier to make these uh, reusable ones. And then, uh, you know, of course, you just pop it in here. Turn it on, and, and they just start spawning in here pretty quick. Now the cool thing about this one, compared to the um, like the uh, soul shower spawners, is um, it doesn't seem to mind that uh, when when there's there's no like mob limit around the spawner. Like the uh, the tier five soul shards, there's like a, a limit on uh, how many will spawn. That's why uh, like this room, the floor is so far away from the spawner, because if it wasn't um, they would just only like uh, I think nine or something like that would be in allowed in the room at one time, and uh, it would take a lot longer to get all that that mob essence. This way, they just I guess because the floor is so far away, it doesn't see them, and it just keeps dropping mobs. Um, I actually tried to raise the floor a little bit because uh, when I first built this room, I only had one over here. They would all fall down, and and then the water would push them down this way. And uh, I went AFK f for a few minutes and came back and had like 300 mobs in here. So uh, that's when I, I I raised the floor, I think, three three blocks up and then added all these. But they it still constantly spawns. And uh, it, it'll just every like when I went over to the um, Twilight Forest and came back, uh, there was like, 250 in this corner and 250 in this corner so I don't know what that glitch was but uh, so I had to 
it was the lag was so bad that I had to uh, go to peaceful mode and make them all disappear uh, so I could even get in the room. But that's where we're at right now. I think uh, hopefully next episode we'll uh, we'll be in the uh, production of of our alviaries and we can get we can get started with that. And uh, and this is another little weird glitch. I don't have this on, but uh, every time I come in here, uh, I have cow spawned. So I don't know where the hell they're coming from. That's kind of weird. Well, I appreciate everybody coming by. I uh, hope you enjoyed the episode. Got any questions, comments, make, don't forget to uh, send them out to me. Let me know. And uh, hit that like button and su subscribe if you haven't, of course. That lets you know when uh, when I got a new episode up. Unfortunately, they're just not as often as they used.